In this video, I'll be sharing five things I wish I knew before a master's in architecture, and it might shock you. The first thing is, there are no formal lectures. If you go into master's thinking you're going to learn a lot of information about different topics in architecture, in that sense, you're not going to learn anything new. Time is limited in master's, so you're not going to be looking at various topics. Instead, your research is going to be very focused on the areas that interest you. And it's also important to know that even when you graduate master's or when you're studying in master's, you're not going to become an expert, but that's completely fine because there are experts there to help you like your lecturers, your tutors, or your mentors. So full-time is two years and part-time is three years but the workload is very very similar and I studied full-time but I've spoken to a number of part-time students that kind of share the similar experience so when I was a full-time student let's say I had three modules my part-time friend would only have two modules but you're kind of still expected to produce the same quality of work as a full-time student there are kind of four different options on how you can go about this so if you go full-time master's, in the UK, you will receive the full funding for your tuition and also living expenses, which is pretty useful. And that gives you kind of the security to focus on uni, but that also means that you have more student loans. Now, another option is to do full-time and work part-time in a practice or maybe a different job one to three days a week which is very very difficult and I don't recommend it unless the part-time job is kind of related to the same field so if you were a research assistant in your school a friend I knew worked in a library another friend worked in the CAD lab so an approach like that might work for you but if you do decide to work somewhere else I don't I personally don't think you'll be able to manage because the workload is just so intensive. Now, if you go part-time, you won't receive the full funding in the UK. You will only receive about half of the tuition fee and you won't receive any funding for your living costs. So then some people might take a full-time work. So my husband right now, he is working full-time at a practice, uh, which is four days a week. And then for one day, he will go to master's. And he's finding it so difficult to balance between both things. But of course, the positive of this is that you're working in a practice, so you're gaining more experience and you're also not receiving the big loan which is not an advantage but also if you look at it that means you have less student loans to pay back and then you have the final option which is to go part-time and also work part-time which i think might work because you're also gaining experience but you kind of have to split your attention 50 50 between uni and work and i think maybe that could be doable but you also have to think that masters will take three years to finish so it is kind of a commitment. So in the ideal situation, what I would recommend is that you don't go into master's straight after undergrad. You would actually wait a year or two so that you can save up. So with that money, you can either pay your tuition fees or kind of support yourself while you're studying so you don't have to take another job. And also when you work one or two years before master's, you'll be able to gain a lot of experience and knowledge about how a practice works, how projects and clients are dealt with. So when you are in master's, you can make better informed decisions and you can also just ask better questions and inevitably learn more. At the end of the day, it's really up to you if you want to graduate with a ton of experience from a professional practice or if you want to graduate knowing that you have given master's 100% and you've explored it the most. The next thing is the school that you go to matters. I get questions about this all of the time. Should I study masters in this or masters in that? Which one is producing more money? Which one is more valuable in the industry? For me personally, I don't think I would be able to study something that I don't enjoy. And I think that money will come if you are valuable to the industry because you're producing work that you love and you enjoy. Masters is such a long investment and it's, you know, you're investing in your career. So it should be something that you are 100% happy with your decision. It's your time, it's your effort, it's your money. So you should be 100% confident with your choice. Of course, you know, consider money, have it as a, a factor in your decision, but don't let that be the main factor. 
and with that also look at the school that you're going into so if you want to enjoy or specialize in a specific field then you can pick a school that specializes in that or has lectures and tutors that can guide you throughout that process. Also look at the location of the university, its qualification, the finance, if they have any scholarships, the facilities, and also the faculty. Which leads me to the next thing that I wish I knew, which is all about faculty. I wish I took more time to research into the faculty and kind of figure out which tutor kind of aligned with my interests. So I did find that out after speaking to a few tutors, of course. It would have been helpful to just look at this beforehand because you are developing this one-on-one -on -one relationship with your tutor, which is super valuable because once you have that relationship, they can be your mentors, help you reach a specific goal. And the last thing that I want to touch upon is that post-graduation depression is real. So I am definitely kind of struggling with that. It's It's really hard to kind of adjust to a life after uni just being in education for almost you know all my life and now and now I'm transitioning into full-time work so you kind of have this I don't know graduation blues I just want you to know that if you are feeling this way you are not alone it's really important for you to not compare your journey to others so if you have not secured a job or if you're not where you want it to be in this current moment of time just go easy on yourself and know that your time will come and if you ever need to speak to anyone you know reach out to friends and family you don't have to have your whole life figured out you know take as much time as you need to kind of figure out your next steps and never doubt your abilities never doubt what you've accomplished so far I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful and if you did please give this video a massive thumbs up and don't forget that now you can book a call with me on Superbeer. I'll have all the links to my services down below. If you need any help creating a portfolio or CV I can help you with that on my Fiverr page. If you're looking for any packs or vector graphics that should be on my Gumroad and if you are looking to watch courses or a longer format of tutorials have a look at my patreon and with that being said thank you so much for watching and tuning in i'm Rasha Shururu and i'll see you next time bye